If you think your refrigerator is draining hundreds of dollars in electricity every month, you've been lied to. And if you're planning for power outages based on internet myths, you might be wasting thousands on backup power you don't actually need. In this video, I'm going to show you the real-world power consumption of refrigerators based on actual testing, not guesses or outdated formulas. You'll discover why everything you've read online is probably wrong, how to calculate your fridge's true energy needs, and exactly what size backup power system you really need to keep your food safe during an outage. Welcome to Prep Pantry, where we cut through the BS and give you practical, tested advice for emergency preparedness. If you're tired of misinformation and want real answers, hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss our data-driven guides. Let's talk about one of the most persistent myths in the preparedness community, the idea that refrigerators are absolute power hogs that will drain your backup batteries in hours. Go into any forum, any comment section, any Facebook group about emergency preparedness, and you'll find people claiming that a typical fridge uses 3 to 4 kilowatt hours per day. Some sources even claim it could be higher, especially for larger models with ice makers and water dispensers. This number gets repeated so often that it's become accepted as gospel truth. People make expensive purchasing decisions based on this information. They buy massive generators, oversized power stations, and entire solar panel arrays, all because they've been told their fridge is a power-hungry monster that needs constant feeding. But here's the problem. It's wrong. Dramatically wrong. And the evidence is overwhelming. So where does this misinformation come from? Well, it starts with a fundamental misunderstanding of how refrigerators operate. Most people walk up to their fridge, flip it around, and look at that little metal plate on the back. They see numbers like 115 volts and 3 amps, or maybe a direct wattage rating like 350 watts or 600 watts. And they think to themselves, okay, so my fridge uses 350 watts continuously. Then they do some quick math. 350 watts times 24 hours equals 8,400 watt hours, or 8.4 kilowatt hours per day. That seems insane, so they figure the fridge must not run all the time. They've heard somewhere that fridges run about a third of the time, so they divide by three. That gives them roughly 2.8 kilowatt hours per day. Still seems high, but close enough to the 3 to 4 kilowatt hour numbers they've seen online, so it must be right. Except it's not. Not even close. The rated wattage on that metal plate isn't telling you how much power your fridge uses on average. It's telling you the maximum power draw when the compressor is running at full capacity, which typically only happens when you first plug in the fridge and it's cooling down from room temperature or after you've left the doors wide open for an extended period. This confusion has real consequences. People spend hundreds or thousands of extra dollars on backup power systems they don't need. They feel anxious about power outages, convince their food will spoil because they can't possibly keep their fridge running long enough. They argue in comment sections, spreading the same bad information to others, perpetuating a cycle of misinformation that costs people money and peace of mind. And the frustrating part? The truth has been available all along. You just have to actually test it instead of relying on back-of-the-envelope calculations and internet hearsay. To understand what's really going on, we need to talk about how your refrigerator actually works. Because once you understand the mechanics, the power consumption numbers will make complete sense. Your refrigerator has a compressor, basically the heart of the cooling system. This compressor is what draws the majority of the power. When it's running, yes, your fridge might pull 300, 400, even 600 watts, depending on the model. But here's the critical point. The compressor doesn't run continuously. It can't. That's not how refrigeration works. Think about it this way. Your fridge's job isn't to constantly cool. Its job is to maintain a specific temperature. Once the interior reaches that target temperature, usually around 37 degrees Fahrenheit for the fridge compartment and zero for the freezer, the compressor shuts off. It stays off until the temperature rises above a certain threshold, then kicks back on to bring it back down. This is called the compressor cycle, and it's the key to understanding real power consumption. When your fridge is already cold and you're not constantly opening the doors, your fridge might only run for a few minutes every hour. The rest of the time, your fridge is just sitting there, maintaining temperature with excellent insulation, drawing only a tiny amount of power for lights, control panels, and sensors. Now, when does your fridge actually use that rated maximum power? There are really only a few scenarios. 
First, when you initially plug it in and it has to cool down from room temperature, this is the most power-intensive period, and it might last a few hours. Second, after you've left the doors open for a long time, maybe while cleaning or reorganizing. Third, during extremely hot weather when the ambient temperature is very high and the fridge has to work harder to maintain its internal temperature. But in normal operation, in a typical household environment, with normal door opening and closing, your fridge is nowhere near its maximum power draw most of the time. To prove this once and for all, actual hands-on testing was conducted with three different refrigerators. Not estimates, not formulas, real measurements with real fridges over a full 24-hour period. The first fridge was rated at 345 watts, a standard household model, nothing fancy. The second was what you might call a beefy fridge, rated at a hefty 609 watts, much larger, more powerful compressor. The third was a lab fridge, rated at 350 watts, but with extra features like an ice maker, water dispenser, and a touchpad control panel. Each fridge was connected to a power station, equipped with precise wattage and voltage monitoring. These weren't lab conditions with the doors kept shut. These were real-world conditions, doors opened and closed as needed, normal daily use. The goal was to measure actual consumption, not theoretical best-case scenarios. And the results? Absolutely eye-opening. When first plugged in, yes, the compressors kicked on hard. The 345-watt fridge drew close to its rated maximum. The 609-watt beast pulled hard too. But this only lasted for the initial cooldown period. Once the fridges reached their target temperatures, everything changed. During maintenance mode, which is where your fridge spends most of its time, the actual power draw dropped dramatically. Even the beefy 609-watt fridge was only drawing around 110 to 130 watts when the compressor cycled on. And remember, the compressor wasn't running continuously. It would kick on for a few minutes, cool things down, then shut off. The lab fridge with all its extra features showed another interesting detail. Even when the compressor was completely off, it still drew a small amount of power, about 5 to 15 watts, just to keep the lights, touchpad, and sensors running. Not much, but it adds up over 24 hours if you're trying to be precise. So after a full day of normal use, with doors opening and closing, typical household conditions, what was the total consumption for each fridge? Approximately 1.3 kilowatt hours, all three of them. Despite their different ratings, despite their different sizes and features, they all landed in the same ballpark, about 1300 watt hours per day. Not 3 kilowatt hours, not 4 kilowatt hours, not even 2 kilowatt hours, just 1.3. Let that sink in. The number that everyone quotes online, 3 to 4 kilowatt hours, is more than double the actual consumption measured in real-world testing. Now let's break down why the common formula is so wrong and what you should use instead. The formula most people use goes like this. Take your fridge's rated wattage, divide it by 3 because the fridge supposedly runs a third of the time, then multiply by 24 hours. For a 350-watt fridge, that's 350 divided by 3, which equals about 116 watts average times 24 hours, giving you 2,800 watt-hours or 2.8 kilowatt-hours per day. This formula overestimates actual usage by more than double. Why? Because it assumes the fridge draws full rated power whenever the compressor is on, and it assumes the compressor runs a full third of the time once the fridge is already cold. Both assumptions are wrong. In reality, as we saw from the testing, the compressor doesn't always draw full rated power during maintenance cycles and it doesn't run nearly as much as a third of the time once the fridge is already cold. A much more accurate formula based on actual measured data is to divide the rated wattage by 6 instead of 3. So for that same 350 watt fridge, 350 divided by 6 equals about 58 watts average times 24 hours, giving you roughly 1,392 watt hours or 1 1.4 kilowatt hours per day. That aligns almost perfectly with the 1.3 kilowatt hours measured in testing. Now before you you go thinking every single fridge will use exactly 1.3 kilowatt hours, let's talk about the factors that can affect consumption. Larger fridges generally use more power, though not always as much more as you'd think. If you live in a very hot climate and your fridge is in a garage or unair conditioned space, the compressor will have to work harder and run more often. If you have teenagers who stand in front of the open fridge for five minutes deciding what to eat, that'll increase your consumption too. Extra features matter as well. Ice makers, water dispensers, smart displays, these all add to your baseline power draw. 
but even accounting for all of these factors, you're still looking at significantly less than the 3 to 4 kilowatt hour myth. So what does all this mean for your backup power planning? Everything. If you're shopping for a portable power station or generator to keep your fridge running during outages, knowing that your fridge uses about 1.3 kilowatt hours per day completely changes the equation. Let's say you're looking at a Delta Pro 3 power station with a capacity of around 4 kilowatt hours. Based on the myth, you'd think that would barely last you a day, maybe a day and a half at best, but with actual consumption of 1.3 kilowatt hours per day, that same power station can run your fridge for three full days without recharging or adding expansion batteries. Even smaller units like a Delta 3 Plus would be sufficient for most power outages, which rarely last more than 24 hours in most regions of the country. You don't need to spend thousands on an oversized system unless you're in an area prone to extended multi-day outages. Now, if you do live in an area with frequent long duration outages, maybe you're in a rural area or somewhere that gets hit hard by hurricanes or ice storms, then yes, you might want to consider a larger system or supplemental solar panels, but you should be making that decision based on accurate information, not inflated consumption numbers that don't reflect reality. Let's talk about solar for a second. If you're planning to use solar panels to recharge your power station during an outage, that's great if you have reliable sunlight. But if you're in Alaska during winter or anywhere with limited daylight hours or heavy cloud cover during storm season, you need to plan for relying primarily on stored battery capacity. The good news is that with actual fridge consumption being so much lower than the myth, your stored capacity goes a lot further than you thought. Here are five practical tips for managing your fridge's power consumption during an outage and maximizing your backup power. First, keep the doors closed. This sounds obvious, but it's critical. Every time you open the fridge or freezer, warm air rushes in and the compressor has to work to cool everything back down. During an outage, resist the temptation to check on your food every hour. Make a plan, take out what you need all at once, and close the door quickly. Second, monitor your ambient temperature. The hotter your environment, the harder your fridge works. If possible, try to keep your home cooler during an outage. Open windows at night when it's cooler outside, close curtains and blinds during the day to block heat. Every degree you can keep your house cooler means less work for your fridge. Third, know your fridge's features and consider which ones you can disable. If you're running on backup power, you don't need the ice maker running. You don't need the water dispenser chilling water. If your fridge has a vacation mode or power saving mode, use it. Those touchpads and displays draw power even when the compressor isn't running. So disable what you don't absolutely need. Fourth, and this is important, use a power meter. The most accurate way to know your specific fridge's consumption is to measure it yourself. You can buy a wattage meter for $20 to $30. Plug it in between your fridge and the wall outlet, let it run for 24 hours, and check the total kilowatt hours used. This gives you a precise number for your specific fridge in your specific environment, which is better than any estimate or formula. And fifth, always plan for worst case scenarios. If you expect outages could last multiple days, if you live in an extreme climate, if your fridge is older and less efficient, or if you simply want peace of mind, then size your backup system with some buffer. Better to have more capacity than you need than to come up short, but at least now you're building that buffer on top of accurate baseline numbers, not inflated Myths. One more thing, if you're reading comment sections and forums and you see people claiming fridges use 3 to 4 kilowatt hours per day, consider educating them. Most people aren't trying to spread misinformation, they genuinely believe what they're saying because that's what they've been told. Share real-world test results, explain how compressor cycles work, encourage people to measure their own consumption. The more we replace myths with data, the better decisions everyone can make. The bottom line is this. Household refrigerators are far more efficient than the internet would have you believe. While the rated rottage on the label might look intimidating, the actual daily consumption is typically around 1.3 kilowatt hours, well within the capabilities of even mid-sized portable power stations and generators. Understanding how your fridge really operates and basing your planning on actual measured data instead of inflated formulas means you can make smart decisions about backup power. You can avoid unnecessary expenses on oversized systems you don't need. And most importantly, you can have confidence that during an outage, you have exactly what you need to keep your food safe without breaking the bank. Don't let myths and misinformation dictate your emergency preparedness strategy. Trust the numbers, do your own testing, and stay charged. Now you know the truth about refrigerator power consumption, and you're prepared to make smart decisions about backup power. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Prep Pantry for more myth-busting emergency preparedness content. Drop a comment below and tell us, were you surprised by these results? See you in the next one.